What is up guys, my name is Dre and welcome to another Water Ring Race video. Now, in today's video, we are talking about the implementation of Yinlin into the tier list now that she officially is in the game, now that we have her kit and all the numbers available um, officially, yeah, as I already mentioned. So, uh, in this tier list, I will mainly talk about the changes that happened because the last tier list that I made was very recently where I just compared the Pride Win tier list. This is the tier list that I am using here in this video. Definitely make sure to check the website pridewin.gg. They make very good tier lists, even though for other gacha games, I use them for Honkai Star Rail and for Black Clover Mobile. I will put the link in the description below. So definitely make sure to check them out. I think they do a very good work. They keep on updating tier lists, even for the other games and especially for Wuthering Waves, the game that we are talking about. Um, on the channel mainly at the moment so yeah um for this video um i will only talk about the changes that happened because as as i already mentioned the last tier list that i made was very recently so if i don't talk about a certain character and you want to know about it um i might have um said something about the character in the last video which i still think is relevant even if i don't talk about it uh, in this video so that's why i will only talk about characters that moved up or moved downwards into the tier list um, because I think just like one or two days after I uploaded the last tier list they already updated this but then Yin Lin's release was so close that I said I will just wait until she releases and then I will take a look at her and then I have to decide myself uh, how I will handle it and yeah that's the way I want to do it I want to do it today and to keep the, the tier list as updated as possible on the channel right so okay um, as you can see, um, I, I think there are, um, the common knowledge, we have the three categories, DPS, hybrid, and support characters. Hybrid characters, probably the category that are characters that can deal damage for a short amount of time, but usually you use those characters to swap them out into your DPS character. These are characters that are mostly support the damage of those DPS characters that probably can amplify and also probably can do a lot of damage for themselves without being on the field as long as dps characters um and they don't um acquire a very high screen time compared to dps characters right okay so yinlin is in the tier zero category so we have a tier zero character for every category in the team so probably you might think the perfect team is jian uh yinlin and arena but yeah it is not like that uh, this doesn't function like that yinlin has energy with a lot of characters in the game I, but i think she synergizes way better with these three characters than with these characters and i think especially these three characters and especially kaljaro becomes even better with the release of yinlin so they become more relevant so that the king jian is not the only best dps in the game anymore so i really do think that these three characters and as i already mentioned especially kalcharo becomes even more relevant with the release of yin lin all right so let's take a look at her a little bit more closely so i don't want to go over her kit because that's like not the part of the video i want to compare her and want to show you guys probably why she is in the tier zero category so as you can see here we have Yinlin in a one target scenario and her rotation time is 3.73 seconds. So probably four seconds, all right? And if she hits uh, S2, so that probably means that you have, you have to have three copies of her. So one copy to have her S0 and two more copies to have her S2. That's all, that are three copies in total. Then your rotation time gets quicker by like 0 0.9 seconds or one second, right? So if we just round it up. So, but I want to talk about the most realistic Yinlin that most people would have, and that is probably the S0 Yinlin. Um, as you can see here, here is her number. Now, this comparison is not really representative, but I still want to show you guys um, this to make it clear or to show you why this character really is tier zero. So we can see the number here. These are 290,498 damage and 58,894 DPS. So just for the explanation, I think that it should be clear, but I will still explain it here. 
The numbers below show the character's DPS, so damage per second, pretty much the uh, as it is in the name, the damage that the character deals per second, and of course the total damage in the rotation. Okay, so um, this is like the quick ex explanation on what they focused on. So when selecting rotations, we prioritized achieve one at Crescetto as fast as possible, and once that condition was fulfilled, we focus on maximizing the damage output. All right, so. If you want to uh, read further for this, just go to the side. So I won't go uh, deeper into this. I just want to, I just want to um, emphasize this and show you guys like why this character is so strong. And I want to you guys to pay especially attention on this number, the fifty-eight thousand eight hundred ninety-four DPS for the S zero Yinlin, because I think this is the most realistic Yinlin that everybody has. Now we compare this with. The DPS, the strongest DPS by the TLS right now, which is Qian. Qian's total damage output, 407,865 compared to 290,400. Okay, clearly this is like double the amount. But now compare the DPS, 33,503 compared to 58,894. This is nearly, nearly... The uh, double the amount of damage from Jian, and now his rotation is 12 seconds, and Jinlin's rotation is under four seconds. So even if we say four seconds, if her rotation is four seconds and she deals this amount of damage, okay, let's say she does the rotation three times, then we're also at 12 seconds. Then we're at we should be at 600k, right? Mathematically, or 600 even 660k. Jian is at 470k. So we already can tell here that Yinlin is even more insane than Jian as the sub DPS in her sub DPS role. She outclasses him in terms of DPS and she outclasses him in terms of total damage output on S0. This even scales a little further, but it's not as relevant, but I still want to show you because it's interesting. 74,000 DPS. On S6, so the maximum Jion, if you have seven copies of him, and if you have seven copies of Yinlin, 144,000. That's now really double the amount, probably. Okay, it's not, it's still 74,000 times two is still like 158, right? Or 159 with the 99,000. And this is like uh, 10K, le uh, 15K less still. And we have the 409,000 damage in total, but. This times four, we're at 12, uh, we had 1,200,000 if we multiply this by three, because in the in the same time we use his rotation where he does deal 911,000 damage, we can do her rotation probably three times, right? Then it's uh, uh, 1,200,000, as you can see. So she out damages Chion, the, the DPS character. The current currently by the teal is the strongest DPS character. So maybe maybe we should do a comparison maybe again uh, um, with Colcharo, <laughs> like just to compare um, Colcharo alongside with um, Gian. So as we can see here, Colcharo does less damage than Gian, but it's not too much. So they're kind of close to each other. And then we have Yinlin here, who outplaces basically both of them. But Colcharo's um, and Colcharo's rotation time is also eleven point nine seconds which is very comparable to 12.1 seconds. So that's pretty much the same, right? Because I think like in in the praxis, like in the actual gameplay, 0 0.2 seconds won't make it. One second definitely will make a difference. Two seconds will make a difference. But I think like 0.2 seconds won't make that big of a difference. You won't notice it. So that's why I think 33,500 compared to uh, 32,600, I think could be noticeable. Um, a little bit, but not too much. So I think they're kind of close. Still, Jian is like overall the better unit um, in terms of the DPS and the total damage output. But Kal Charo paired with Yinlin is now insane, insanely, insanely good. And yeah, this is just to show you. Now, I just want to go over like these two because before Yinlin released, these two have basically the same role, the hybrid role. Of course, they are just four stars. So, um, and I won't use the spectral robot to compare it, but 
we have the four side characters so i just want to uh, show you like the numbers of these and i think we could we we could even say that we look at them as s6 because i think it is realistic that you get the four star characters at s6 at one point but you won't get yinlin at s6 at one point because you probably have to force to summon for her while i think modify and senwa you will get them um just by time right so if you continuously play the game one day you'll probably have them at five or s6 and s5 or s6 same for senwa and i think this is really representative so for senwa i think after s4 her DPS doesn't increase that much, but her total damage increases a little bit. Like by se from S4 to S6, it's 7,000, and for DPS, it's like 1,300, which is still a noticeable amount. But her rotation time is 4.29 seconds, so um, she does less damage already by default, and also her rotation time is longer. So that already shows that even at S6, she can't even get on the same as nearly as on the same level as yinlin now we look at mortify mortify of course has a higher dps than zenwa but also like 0 0.5 seconds more rotation time this could be noticeable 0 0.5 sec uh, 0. Point, it's okay it's 0 0.3 seconds um i i was a little uh judging a little bit too fast on this but this also could could impact a little bit but i said 0 0.2 seconds shouldn't be that no noticeable so 0 0.3 seconds shouldn't also be that noticeable but 38,000 damage this is a big difference compared to xanua of course but still at s0 this is still 20k more dps is still 20k more but total damage of him is 200k of her is also 219k so this is 240k so this is uh like the, the overall dps and the total damage output all of course comparable but the rotation takes i think uh two seconds longer right is it two seconds yeah it's nearly two seconds it's uh 1.9 right this is 1.9 seconds so this is nearly two seconds longer <laughs> so yeah just just to show you guys how op this character actually is right now these are the current numbers okay so yeah i think that really showed uh that clearly showed like the difference between like her the current dps rosters and of course the next best two hybrid characters now next thing here um i want to make it like a little bit quicker the havoc rover is uh, moving up to the 0 0.5 category i think in the last tier list he wasn't even included probably due to the fact that they maybe didn't want to spoiler that uh, he is a thing but just by now, I think everybody knows that the Havoc Rover exists and he's really insane. I use him. So I use him as my main DPS. I actually use him as my second DPS at the moment. And I really think he's uh, very, very good. I don't even have him on S2. While S2 is like the the thing that you really want to have on him. Um, it's uh, reset resonance skills, cooldown when Rover enters the dark search state by casting heavy attack devastation. So... I think this is a really good skill. You, it does require you a little bit of farming because you need to get uh, you need to get these thingies to spend it on uh, on the dude to uh, get his um, S two to get his resonance chains. But um, it is free to play, so yeah, you definitely can get it. So I would highly recommend to build up the rover if you haven't had any of these three characters probably. So if you don't if you don't have one of these three or if you don't want to use one of these three. And you also don't want to use Dajin as your alternative, then I definitely say Rover is the best pick for your DPS. This is like probably the best free to play character in the game. And I would really recommend to build Rover. Yeah, um, for Xianchen, she also she I think she very recently just moved up to the uh tier, tier 0 0.5 category in the support role. Which also surprised me because I honestly I, I play her in the DPS role, but I'm just trolling like on my account. And yeah, I play her as a DPS. I don't even use her as the support. And maybe we can see it at the change log here. The change log already tells us why they move up a certain character. So Jonjan has been moved to the support career and her rating has been increased from tier 1 to tier 0 0.5. After discussing, reviewing, and testing different playstyles put forth by the community creators 
our own team, Jianchen, has found great success in the support role. Thanks to CC, defensive nature, gathering, and situationally powerful outro. As big Xianchen fans, we're happy uh, she's able to shine in the AoE portion to um, Tower of Adversity. For more info, yeah, check the block here. So, yeah, she might be a really good option for Tower of Adversity. I honestly have to say, I didn't play Tower of Adversity too much. I already started to clear it. And the stages that uh, I could beat were very easy with my Xianchen. That's why I cannot complain about it. But, like, still compared to other characters, my problem about the character or my criticism about the character is that the build-up for this... Even though uh, what I think she's really good at is that she can do a lot of things. Uh, people complain about that she is not really good in a certain thing. But that's the thing why I like her so much. Because she is a flexible character. She can do a lot of things. But the problem that I have with her is that her setups need a lot of build-up. So probably... Um, you need to build up her energy to do the heavy attack and then um, you can trigger the shield and then you can uh, get the heal. This, I think the whole build up for this will take at least two to three seconds at the bare minimum. I think it should took it should take even longer, but the bare minimum is two to three seconds. While if you use Verena, you just slot her in, click every buttons, slot her out. Go to your, uh, one of your sub DPSs, do your thing and then go back to your main DPS and clear the whole stage. And then you go uh, over your rotation again. Well, for Xianchen, I, I honestly think that doesn't really work that way because Xianchen does require a, a little bit of screen time. So uh, honestly, I have to say that I don't know if she is right in this place, even though I think this character is good. But for me, the tier 0 0.5 category is probably like unfair characters. Like tier 0 is the most OP. These are the god characters, right? But tier 0 0.5 are not god characters, but these are like unfair characters with potential to be god characters. And even though I am biased and Jianjin is my favorite character, I have to say that I don't see her in the unfair category. I think that this character overall is good. Don't get me wrong, but I think she's very fair compared to others because her drawback is she does need a lot of screen time to do the stuff that support the team. And the screen time will take time in the tower, for example, in the tower of adversity that your DPS requires to do damage on the enemies or maybe even your sub DPS characters. So yeah, that's, that's like the only criticism that I have, but yeah. Um, so I'm happy that community likes ranking her here. Pride one likes to rank her here. Um, like overall, I, I won't complain too much about it. But yeah, that's like the criticism that I have of the only, probably only using that character or mainly using that character. But yeah, I hope that wasn't too long. I actually only talk about these three characters and we're like still 20 minutes in. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, definitely subscribe for more Wuthering Waves content in the future. Uh, I will see you guys in one of my next videos or probably the next dealers. And yeah.